fast forward to your current role right now. Um, what are the points of emphasis that you're looking for when it comes to, you know, the, the NBA players ball handling skills and where they're at and how they can improve, et cetera. I look, uh, I, I try to go back to the beginning with mm -hmm. each, with each player I come in contact with. Cause it's funny, you know, and Mark, you know, this too, and you know, you know this as well, yeah. you know, the more you stop using something, the more you forget it. Yeah. You know, like people automatically think every, like if you look at everybody should be able to make layups. Did you know what I mean? People miss layups. In the NBA, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, know, so, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, like every player, it's just funny because like when I start off with certain players, you know, I mean, when I first got to Dallas, I was showing the player, I don't want to say his name because right now he's he's currently not in the NBA and and I, I understand why. In the it's NBA like, right you know, now. Let's go. Yeah, so it's like it's like real funny because when I first when I first got there, I was showing him some drills, but I was showing him like some drills, and I started like showing him drills, but I showed him like in the cones, like showing him some cones, and he was like, "Man, I I don't want to do this, man. This is like some little kid stuff." And I'm like, and I'm saying to myself, I'm like, "But you can't you can't dribble, you know." <laughs> yeah. So, but he's like, you know, and he's like, "Nah, you know, just show." Just show me, just show me how to do the sham guys. Show me, let me sh show me some sauce. Like, show me some sauce. And I'm like, sauce? I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, bro, you gotta learn how to dribble first. Like, you gotta learn how to dribble first before you can do all this other stuff, you know? <laughs> but in his mind, he was just like, nah, just show me all this like difficult stuff. And I'm like, bro, this is stuff I've been practicing for years, you know? And I try to tell every person I come in contact that anytime, I do dribbling where I'm like, you got to learn the first three things. I'm like, you got to learn how to cross over. You got to learn how to put it between your legs. You got to learn how to put it behind your back. Like, if you don't know those three things, then it's impossible for you to do anything else. Yeah. I'm like, so you need to master these three things first, yeah. you know? And once you master that, then I can show you other stuff like footwork, angles, and things like that. Because people don't know, like, everything is on – everything is about angles when it comes to ball handling and stuff like that. Cause that's, that's why you see some guys that you see is blessed with, with dribbling. They, they quick, they got, they got speed. They got, you know, all this athleticism, but then you have somebody like where you go against a Steve Nash, where he's not as, not as quick or not as explosive as somebody else, but he's always getting around the person that's explosive and the person that's quick. And people wonder why, how his change of speed and his pace you know, control the game. And you're looking at him like, well, he's not really that fast. He's not this, but it's because of his angles and his IQ on where he want to get. <laughs> Is it fair to say that it's kind of a combination of, let's say, you know, from your experience in the city, you got uh, the footwork coming from, you know, just, you know, playing games, again, 21 mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, extreme ball control and handles not only from, playing in the games, but also just, you know, having the balls in your, the ball in your hands, like outside of the court, on the way to the court, mm -hmm. in your house, on the couch, just constantly, you know, always having the ball in your hand um, on the way to, on the way to the court. Would you, would it be fair to say that, you know, all that kind of played a role in your development, just in, you know, being comfortable with the ball? Yeah, for sure. Cause I would say, the one thing about the one thing about dribbling that's different from shooting or rebounding or passing or dribbling you can always do. Yeah. You know, like right now I'm sitting on the couch. I got you know, when I used to be younger and I sit on the couch, yeah. I'm dribbling the basketball, just sitting here going between my legs and, you know, making moves and creating moves in my head. You know, even the thing about creativity is like is uh, more of doing things people think you won't do. So I always try. I always tell people, I'm like, the the thing that you won't do is the thing that get that you get away with easy, because mm -hmm. a player a player don't if a player don't think outside the box like you, those moves that people think are hard, they're really not that hard, because the person that's gone you just don't think you would do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like growing up. If, I, if I'm playing defense and I play against somebody. And I don't think they'll like throw it between my legs because of the magnitude of this game or where we at. And then somebody do it and they're like, man, that was so hard for him. It's like, it's really not because, you know, in my mind, I don't, there's no way I would think he would possibly do this, you know? So it's even like when it came to, you know, the sham guard move and things like that. Like when I first did that, like I, I messed up a move and then I went into a, I just reacted to the person. And then because I watch film a lot, I'm like, man, I'm like, man, this, this move, this thing could work right here. 
Yeah. You know, and, and the reason why it works is because the the whole start of the beginning of the move, you know, you look like you lost the ball first. And then you run as fast as you can to pull the ball back, you know. And when you first initially do it, the person he's reacting how you react. And so if you push the ball out, the person is thinking, Oh, I can get I can get the ball. So, you know, and if you move faster than him, then of course you'll pull it back. But for me, like just growing up, like I said, I just I just watched tons of film. You know, it's just like a shot maker, watch a whole bunch of shots and different angles on, you know, even if you watch like a person like Kyrie. When he's dribbling, you know, it's a certain cadence that he has. Mm -hmm. You know, like he come down, throw it between his legs, inside out cross, throw it back behind his back, or he go forward. You know, mm -hmm. if, if you if you watch him enough, it's the same cadence. The only thing that changes is the footwork after the dribble. That's what change and make the dribble look different. But it's the same, the, 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 the setup and everything is the same cadence. Me growing up, I just, I just never wanted to have a cadence, oh. you know, because most, you know, as Mark, most players have cadence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Me, I dribble, I used to always dribble so much that everything for me was just reaction. It was just oh. never a setup. So that's why I even like growing up and people just like, oh, you know, um, you know, like I've, I never played with N one, but then people always affiliated me with N one. <laughs> I used to be like, yo, I used to be like, I used to be like, yo, this this is so crazy for me because I've never played, I never physically played with N one in my life. So, but yeah. it's because of the way I drew. But I'm like, I'm, and you know, when people are like, oh yeah, do this move, do this move, do the shame, do this, and I'm like, no, that wasn't that wasn't a move. It was just something that was a reaction to to the to the defender. The problem we have now when it comes to kids, and I try to talk to kids about, and Mark has attested this because his son is playing and stuff like that. Kids only practice moves. Yeah. So, so that's why they can't really dribble in this era. Yeah. They, they, they only practice moves. They yeah. they don't practice dribbling. They practice moves. So no matter what the defender do, this, this guy's coming up court saying, hey, I'm going to cross over and I'm going to throw it behind his back. I'm going to throw it behind my back or I'm going to do this. Okay, but if the guy's off you, why are you throwing? Why are you crossing it over and throwing it behind your back? Like you just go to the basket, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and, and, and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. And that's and, and I just I just learned that, like I said, growing up, I think more because, like I said, when I grew up, I grew up as a, a defensive player, you know. And if you move it, like even if you move it to boxing, if you look at a person like Floyd, he's a defensive fighter. So everybody's like, oh, how to beat him? How to beat? Is no is no really way to beat him because he's just reacting. To, okay. to, to what the other person is doing. So I like to, like, I just always like to say that with dribbling. Like, if I if I could go to the whole game without doing a sham and just get to the basket, then I'm just get to the basket. Mm -hmm. But I only go on what the defender do because because I know how to dribble. You know what I'm saying? It's the difference between dribbling, handling the ball, you know what I'm saying, vice versa. You know, like I said, most, most people practice moves. I've never practiced moves. I just practice dribbling. That's why I always try to start people off and I say, hey, you know, we're going to start off learning how to cross over. Hey, we're going to start off, you know, second move, we're going to learn how to go between the legs. Hey, go behind the back. Those things seem so simple, oh. but 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 they're really not in, in the flow of the game and the speed of the game. Or when you got when you got to go between your legs in traffic or when you got to cross over in traffic or go behind your back in traffic and knowing when to go between your legs in traffic, you know, knowing that, like Mark tell you, if you're in traffic, you should never go behind your back in traffic, you know, and, and things like that. You know, if you spin in traffic a certain way, you lose vision of the court and, you know, things like that. So I just, I mainly just try, I try to teach people just to learn how to dribble. And then whatever, whatever your imagination take you in the game, oh. then, then, then that's what it's going to take you. And people be like, oh, you know, well, he taught him that, he taught him that. No, nah, not necessarily. I just taught him how to dribble. Everything else came from him. And, yeah. and my job, and my job as a, as a, as a skill developer is, you know, is to pull what's already, you know, it's like a saying where it say bosses push, leaders, leaders pull. I like to call myself a leader. I like to pull. So whatever's in you, I like to pull, pull it out of you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be telling you what you, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. I'm like, because everybody ain't going to dribble like me. Yeah. You know, everybody ain't going to be on the court and their coach ain't going to let them dribble, period. So yeah. it's like some guys I train, I'm like, okay, well, in this offense, you get three dribbles. So we got to make you the best three dribbler person you could possibly be. So, and, and, that, and that's basically 
the same thing as somebody like, oh, man, he got the crazy handle. He really don't. He's only dribbling three times during the game. But you don't notice that because those moves are so effective that you're like, man, he could he could boy him. So that's why you see a person like Jamal Crow. Like, even if you see Jamal Crow, and me and him talk about this all the time, it's like he could – he can handle the ball and things like that, but like I tell people, the way the way he handled the ball, you would think a, a coach would make him a point guard. But it's no, because because everything he does is for him to get a shot off. It's not for him to set people up. It's not for him just to stand there and run the offense. And and that's the difference between a person that's dribbling and a person that's handling the ball. Like if you could do both, then that's that's a great thing. But some people, some people, and Martin know this. They they look like got a handle, but if you press them the whole court, the full court, they they're like all over the place with it. Okay. You know, you be like, man, I thought his handle was way, I thought he way better than that, but it's, it's not. It's because some people only can dribble in the half court, some yeah. people can do before, and some people can do both. Yeah. Not to cut you off, but is it since since the game is changing and you see more big guys handling yeah. the ball? You know what I mean? Is it a different way you teach a big guy? Is it a different way you teach a 6'10", 6'11", guy, 7-foot guy, you know, KG? Seven yeah. foot, but he can handle the ball. Is it a different yeah. way you teach him than the way you would teach, say, uh, I don't know, Jason Kidd or Jason Terry or somebody like that? Is yeah, it a different like, way? Yeah, because it's like, um, like even in Mc, you know, because KG played with me in the McDonald's of American game. So, like, in the McDonald's of American game, he's like, man, I want to learn, I want to learn, you know, I want to learn these moves like you and I, and I'm like, Bro, you, like just what you said. I'm like, bro, you're 16. You don't, yeah. you don't need to be dribbling low as me or things like that. And I'm like, I'm like, I can show you moves. Even like when I play with Weber, I'm like, I can show you moves that you can stand up and learn how to move. Yeah. And, and then I can show you how to shift and show you how to do this. Then you don't really have to bend down, you know. Yeah. So like anybody that's like over six six and six seven and stuff like that, I always tell them, I'm like, you, you should always, you should always dribble knee up. You know okay. what I'm saying? Any, anybody that's like six four or six, you know, I always tell them, you should always dribble knee down. No. You know what I'm saying? Because anybody that's six, like you said, six eight, six ten, they're not bending down where their shoulders is at your knees. That's that's just not happening. And then most of the time, they don't know how to guard. Like I learned that a long time ago, because like I said, watch it film. And Martin Lewis, because he played with him before, like Tim Hardaway. Yeah. He he had the advantage in the post because point guards are not used to guarding people in the post. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he didn't really have to do a whole bunch of Kevin McHale moves and things yeah. like that. He just back you down a little yeah. jump hook over you because uh, most point guards are not used yeah. to guarding people. So I try to tell big men that I'm like, you know, for most big guys, I always try to teach them just you know, you know, inside out move, a stutter step, you know, a quick a quick crossover, you know, because most big guys, if you watch them in the floor of an office, especially in Bay offense, they like to do dribble handoffs. Yeah. So I always tell them, you know, as soon as you're about to do a dribble handoff, let the man go by you. And then once you turn your face, just give him a little quick inside out crossover to get to the rim. I'm like, because he's he going to be standing up just like you standing up most of the time. If you're a little bit lower, you would get there. But, you know, I, I just try to tell big man, like, just learn certain angles. Because if you learn the angles, then it's easier for you to score on a big man. Because, like I said, it's just like a point guard posting up a point guard. He, he really has no clue how to guard a point guard in the post. So yeah. if you if you – if most of the time you if you're just tougher in the yeah. post that you're a guard, you just you're yeah. gonna score automatically. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I just try and then most the biggest thing I try to teach big men is to learn how to pass off the dribble. Yeah. Cause the problem is it's not really the dribble for a big man, it's the after effect after you go past the man when yeah. the little guards are trying to slide in and take offensive fouls and things. Making like them decisions. That. Yeah. yeah, and then the big and then the coach is like, Well, I don't want him dribbling because he can't make yeah. decisions, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So and and that's another thing I try to tell people, like people think it's all about dribbling. I'm like, no, if you don't know how to pick the ball up off a crossover to get into your shot, like you know, as you know, if you don't take that hard dribble at the end to get into your shot, then it's gonna be hard for you to shoot. If you don't know how to uh pick the ball up and, and get to the basket and finish it, then the dribbling don't don't look good. I'm like, the thing that made Kyrie look awesome is because He's a great finisher. Yeah. If, if it's a, it's a lot of people that can dribble. You see people yeah. dribble that can't finish and can't make plays. You're like, man, this man just dribbling the ball for no damn reason. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I try to encourage people, like when they train people, to always try to teach, you know, after the dribble. Like that's because that's the most important part. Okay. You know. Mm -hmm. Would you do the same for a six eight guard? Because my my son is a six eight, he's six eight, but he plays one through four. So yeah, he has guard like, skills and he has a great feel for the game. But would you teach him 
maybe like a big man since he's 6'8", and probably be like 6'11", or would you teach him as a guard since he plays guard? See, the thing is, like, if, you, if, you, if you're if you a 6'8", and you naturally play guard, like, yeah. I try to tell so, – so those type of players, I always tell them, get low enough to where you're comfortable, you know, because you don't want to stand up too high where you're uncomfortable, where you don't have the advantage, and you don't want to be too low where you feel like, you know, you're hurting yourself, you know? So I always try to tell them, you know, get to a point where you're comfortable. And then when you're comfortable and you're at that level, always try to stay up, stay at that level. You know, cause the main thing, even with me, the main thing about dribbling is I try to tell people, whatever level you at, like far as height wise, yeah. you should always stay at that level. You yeah. know, the, the problem with most ball handlers, when they get pressured, they come up out of their stance. Yeah. So, so it's easy for them to get pressured. You know, you should, you should never come out of your stance. You should always be the aggressor, you know? Yeah. Even, Offense and defense, like the best, the best offensive players, the most aggressive ones. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They actually beat you up on offense. You, know? you can't gauge them. Yeah, yeah, you can't gauge them. So I'm like, yeah. most of the problem is people that's really not used to dribbling the ball. When they get attacked, yeah. they just stand up and they backpedal. You know, and then when they backpedal, you know, you lose all the advantage. So I always try to tell people get to where you're comfortable enough with dribbling the ball. You know, if you if you're a short point guard, you should always you should always want to dribble low to the ground. But if you're like six eight and six seven and stuff like that, yeah. the ball can come up as high as you want. Long as long as you long as you can gauge that you know that you're not the mouse in the situation. 